Okay, so a few people wanted to see how the uh, the read machine works. Um, a few improvements I'd made. I'm using a uh, commercial uh, sanding drum, which I will I'll move the camera around uh, here, but uh, here. I've uh, used up the sandpaper here, so I just loosen the drum and I slide the sleeve back and I'm now using here. And then when I am use that, I'll slide the sleeve forward and use this part of it, but it works pretty well. I had to uh, true this drum on my lathe. It's amazing there's not any kind of sanding drum made that actually runs true. I moved, uh, um, also I put a, a steel uh, um, fo a follower uh, element here. The the model reed was actually sanding through the um, the brass that was there. So now I've, I've routed a hole in the brass or a groove and then inserted a hardened steel rod there instead. And uh, this is, you know, where the model reed is located and it, it follows that. And then uh, that's how the, the shape is put where the, the, uh, um, the reed you're making goes over here in this part of the, uh, in this part of it. Um, so I'm not sure if you saw any of that. Let's see. Anyhow, let me put the camera down. So as you know, you know, you start with a tube. There's a splitter over here that I use that uh, I push down on and it splits. Uh, let's see, get my hand out of the way. And it, it's got four blades and it'll split it and you get segments like this. And then the segments are put in the, uh, the planing jig that's over here. I'll pick this up. And here's the planing jig, and you put the segment in there and plane it. And then I have three grades of uh, a sanding stone here that are used uh, and to get them flat. And then that's a finished blank. And then finally, the last step is you put the, uh, the finished blank once it's down to the th thickness you like. And it turns out these guys seem to be performing at, uh, at uh, three millimeters of thickness. You put the, uh, uh, this in here. And, uh, and then you shave down the sides with a, uh, a chisel, and that shapes the sides of the reeds so that you get uh, um, a, a standard uh, um, blank. So what I do is I take the blanks, and um, I put them uh, um, in this mouthpiece here. And then I carve off, starting at 32 millimeters back, I just carve off uh, um, uh, the bark so that uh, uh, the sandpaper doesn't have to do quite as much work and I get to preserve the sandpaper, although this sandpaper lasts pretty long, I have to say. Um, and then uh, um, it goes in here. Let me loosen it up. Pull it up. Push it back. You want to give it a fair amount of clearance because the uh, the holder will bump into the sander, sanding drum uh, if you're not careful. And uh, um, I've measured the distance between the sanding drum and the uh, follower rod, and it's four inches. So I set a caliper to four inches, and then I uh, adjust the spacing of the reed so that it's four inches, like that. There, they're four inches apart. The blank is four inches away from the model. Then I look down from the top and I just center it, tighten it up. And that's that. And now I'm going to make sure it's centered tight. I'm going to turn on the reed making machine. So that's a, a variable power supply. And I've, I've figured out that uh, 10 volts seems to be optimal for, uh, for this guy right now. I'm going to turn on a vacuum cleaner, uh, which will make some noise. And I'll try to hold it back here. Let's see. I'm going to back the camera up like this so you see better what's going on. And then uh, um, so there. Now I roll it to the side. And then I'm going to roll it to the other side. And then what I do is I go rolly rolly while doing back in the shoulder. 
and then I go from the tip and I push to make sure that it's got the ears thin enough. And that's it. I don't see any more dust coming off the wheel. So we're done. Get off the vacuum cleaner. This is my handy dandy dust collector here that I made out of uh, foam core. So then I'll turn that off. Take this puppy out. And I put it in. Now I'm going to back this up over to here. I put it in a bowl of water. Now what I do is I make the reeds a little thick because I like to, uh, you never know how cane is going to behave. And so uh, normally a tip uh, is supposed to be uh, uh, five ml, five mil, sorry, not ml. And this, this is reading seven, seven and a half, which is perfect for me. Cause I know that, uh, you know, if you sight if you sight down the uh, uh, the reed, you will see slight bumpiness, uh, you know, due to the sanding disc. Let's see, can I, I don't know that you can see that. Uh, and so uh, that, that all gets resolved by using uh, emery boards. Um, and uh, there's a whole industry of these waterproof emery boards. So what I do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna roll my hand toward the center of the reed as I get to the front. So I start on the side and roll it. Start on the side and roll it that way. So I go like so. And now I'm flat and I'm going straight across the tip. I don't worry about it. I'm not pressing that hard. And then I start on this side, roll across. Like so. Then I use the finer side. This is uh, 180 and 240. And I do 180 and 240, right across the top. And then finally, I use a very fine one. I think the, these pink ones, they're the uh, pink uh, iridesi, I think they're called on Amazon. And they're not waterproof, so they don't last as long as those nice uh, uh, Marquette, is that what they're called? Uh, Marquart, Marquart. So then I do the fine paper because the coarse paper makes a lot of longitudinal grooves. So there's useless material there. You got to remove with the fine sandpaper. And across the tip again. Then I, uh, um, I also do the edge, just to a few quick sands. Two, three, four. This is a two, 240 grit here. One, two, three, four. And uh, that just gets me a nice straight shoulder. And I'm just gonna measure it one more time. Can we see this? Yes. And so I measure it and there we are at five, five, good. All right, so I'm gonna clip it. I put it in there, oh, I have to clean out the old clipping so I don't get conf confused about what is, uh, what is being clipped. And I center the bottom of the reed here in that pattern there and on these spaces here, maybe like that. And then snip. Then I'm, I'm centering the top so that the same amount of reed shows on each side of the ear of the, uh, of the clipping blade. And I don't know if you can see, but that's, that's what it looks like. I've got no, you know, not, not much sticking through there at all. And then I listen. That's a hard snap, so that means we're at least five five mil there. So I'm going to try it. Interesting uh, gold-plated Leuben that I picked up when I was in Paris for business. Kind of bright sounding, but not as bright as the uh, Silverstein. Um, So I'm going to, I'm going to rotate 
just I'm just testing it out here. I rotate to the left, right? It's a little harder on the uh, right side than it is the left and in the bass. But right off the press, I could play this in a recital. It's not a problem. So uh, I have to say, it's taken me a while to right. get all of this uh, uh, nailed down, but the combination of a true drum and a larger drum than the one I had started out with the uh, the clamping mechanism that holds it down well, and then this uh, follower mechanism here, and then in addition, these micrometer adjustments here to level the bar with the with the drum uh, have made a, a tremendous difference. And uh, just for you uh, uh, reed making geeks in the crowd, here by the way is a uh, um, a sanding, uh, um, uh, I mean a, a, a sawmill. So I can cut all my segments to length using this if I just plug, plug the power supply in over there instead. So it's all kind of self-contained. I call it the reed mocker. <laughs>